In this lesson, we're going to look at some more application problems involving trig, but this time we're going to focus on some situations that involve more than one triangle. So if you look at this first example here, it says you have a firefighter on the ground that sees the fire break through a window, and the angle of elevation to the windowsill, so we're starting with the firefighter, the angle of elevation to the windowsill, so this angle right here is 32, and then the angle of elevation from the firefighter up to the top of the building is 40. So that larger angle is 40. The firefighter is 72 feet from the building. What is the distance from the roof to the windowsill? So what we're trying to find is this distance right here. We're trying to go from the roof to this windowsill. Now if you look at that, that side is a side of this triangle right here, which is an obtuse triangle. It is not a side of a right triangle. In order to be able to use SOHCAHTOA or Pythagorean Theorem, you have to have a right triangle. So the strategy that we're going to use is we're going to look at finding the side length of this right triangle right here. So if I find this X, which is a side of this smaller right triangle, and if I look at then finding this large side of this right triangle right here. So I find, I'm just going to call that y. If I know those two values, I can take y, subtract x from it, and that will leave me with what I need to find. So our strategy here is figure out, first of all, what distance or what segment are you trying to find, and then how can you use right triangles to be able to um, subtract or add and then find that unknown length. So let's go ahead and um, start with solving for the big right triangle. It doesn't matter which one you start with. But if I think about SOHCAHTOA, we look at the big triangle. So this will be my first step. Um, I have the 40 degrees. This will be my opposite. This will be my adjacent. So that means I'm going to be using tan. So tan of 40 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So we're going to cross multiply. We get y equals 72 times tan of 40. And you can decide. You might want to just leave it as that answer right now. You might want to type that in your calculator and get a decimal. It's really your call. Um, but you need to make sure that you keep that exact value. So you shouldn't be rounding until the very last step. So if I do type that in my calculator, I get 60.415173448. Not rounding, keeping that entire value. Or just leave it as 72 times tan 40. So there's my first answer. That's the entire side. I want to find this pink side now so that I can subtract the two. So now I'm going to look at the small triangle. So that means now I'm looking at tan 32. Here's my opposite. My adjacent stays the same. So that means I have x over the adjacent, which is 72. Put that over 1, cross multiply. Again, you can leave your answer for right now as 72 times tan 32. Or write it as a decimal. So if you write it as a decimal, I end up with 44.9905938. And then to get my final answer or that distance that we're looking for, I'm going to take both of these numbers. So the distance that we're looking for is the distance between the roof and the windowsill. I'm going to take the 60.415 or this tan value. I'm going to put dot, dot, dot showing that I really mean this entire decimal minus the 44.915. 990, but again, dot, 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 meaning I really mean that entire decimal, and I'm going to subtract them. In my calculator, you either need to retype in this entire decimal, type in the tan 72 times tan of 40 degrees minus 72 times tan 32 degrees, or arrow up and select these numbers and subtract them. That's probably the easiest way. So when I do that, I get 15.424580. One zero seven three. I am rounding my answer to the nearest tenth. So now when I'm all done, I can say that the distance is approximately equal to 15.4 units on this are feet. So there you have it.
finding a distance on of a side of a triangle that's not a right triangle, but still being able to use trig because we've used two right triangles to do so. So let's go ahead and try another example. Um, this one, the wording's kind of bad on it because it really should say, so we have Jack and Jill that are 20 meters apart, but Jack and Jill, these angle of elevations aren't really drawn correctly. Um, we're going to say that these are the angle of elevation from their feet because it's not really from their eyesight. So the angle of elevation from Jack's feet is 30 degrees to the top of the building, and from Jill's feet, it's 40 degrees. So then we want to know what's the height of this building. So we want to solve for H. So the good thing is H is part of both this small right triangle, and it's also part of this large right triangle. But the issue is if you want to be able to use Sokotoa, you have to know an angle and a side to find another missing side. And if you look at this purple triangle, I have two unknown side lengths and only one angle. Same thing with the pink triangle, except for I have this 20. So really this pink triangle's um, one leg here is going to be 20 plus X. So in this situation, you have two unknowns, but luckily we have two equations. So we can use substitution or a system of equations and then solve by substitution um, or elimination to be able to solve for both variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use substitution, but the first thing you have to do is come up with two, your two equations because you have two variables, so you need two equations. So for the large triangle... I am going to look at, um, so first of all, label my sides. This is going to be my opposite. This is going to be my adjacent. So we're going to be using tan again. So it'll be tan of 30 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. So I'm just going to leave that for right now. And then I'm going to go over to the small triangle. And I am going to, again, be using opposite over adjacent. So tan of 40 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is x. So in this case, we have two unknown sides, but because we have two equations, we're going to be able to solve this. So I have these two equations, two variables. I am trying to solve for h. So really what I want to do is I want to replace x so that it's all in terms of h. So I want to be able to write one equation that's all in terms of h so I can solve for h because I don't really care about x. I just want to find h when I'm all done. So I'm going to look at this equation first because it's a little bit easier to look at. It doesn't have the 20 plus x. I'm going to cross multiply this so we get x times tan of 40 degrees equals h. Remember, if I can replace this x over here, with something in terms of h, I'll be able to solve this equation for h. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by tan of 40. So that means x is going to be h over tan of 40. And remember that tan of 40 degrees is just a number, so if you'd rather make that a decimal, if that helps you, you can, that's fine. And then over on this side, before I plug in, let's get rid of this so it's not written as a fraction because I think that's going to mess people up. So let's just make this, let's cross multiply. So we have h equals um, tan 30 degrees times 20 plus x. And if you want, we can distribute this tan of 30 now or we can wait until we replace it. It doesn't really matter. But either way, I need to take this x and I need to plug it in. Now, if this part is messing you up and you would rather have solved for H and plug and replace the H here, you can do that. It's just you're going to find X and then you're going to have to plug back in to be able to then find H. I'm just trying to make this a little bit shorter by knowing that I'm trying to get H in the equation only, so replacing the X. So that's why I chose to replace the X. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute it. So I have... Um, tan 30 degrees on the outside, I have 20 plus this h over tan 
40 degrees. So now what I have is this pretty messy looking equation, but really I just have to get H by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, distribute this tan of 30 so that I don't have the parentheses. So I'm going to leave this in terms of tan 30 degrees. You can make it a decimal if you want, but by making it a decimal, you're going to have to write out the entire decimal. Um, but if it messes you up thinking tan of 30 degrees is just a number, do a decimal. Make it a decimal and just write it out. So I have H. So this is going to be 20 times tan of 30 degrees. Plus, this on top here will be H times tan of 30 degrees over tan of 40 degrees. So now what I'm going to do, remember, this is just a number, but I think that's going to be messing people up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this H equals 20 times tan of 30, because that's just a number we're going to keep the whole time. But I'm going to make this plus, and I'm going to actually put this right here in my calculator. So I'm going to make that a decimal. So it's going to be tan of 30 degrees divided by tan of 40 degrees. Make sure you have tan in there twice. So it's tan on top, tan on the bottom. So you get this 0 0.6880592. H, because remember I solved the H in there. So now I have to combine like terms, which means I need to subtract this from both sides because I want to move this over with the other H. So I'm going to kind of shortcut this a little. I'm just going to do dot, 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 H. So those are gone. So then you're left with... Um, the subtract, so this is like 1 minus this decimal, so go ahead and do that. I'm just trying to move this page up and it's not letting me. Okay, so I got the page. So I get 0 0.3119407425085. It equals 20 times tan of 30 degrees. We need to then divide by this whole 0 0.311 number. So again, I'm doing dot, dot, dot just for time's sake. So those cancel. I'm left with H equals. In my calculator, I'm using that exact value. So I'm typing in tan time or 20 times tan of 30 degrees. And then I'm dividing by that 0 0.3 number, that entire number and I get 37.0166631359 as my H. Check my rounding directions. What is the height of the building? It doesn't say, so I'm going to add some. Um, round to nearest tenth, since it doesn't specify. So we are going to round to the nearest tenth, so the height is going to be approximately equal, so it's actually going to be 37.0 because I got to still keep that zero um, feet, I, meters, not feet, meters are our units. So there you have it. And again, you could have solved for x, it wouldn't be wrong to solve for x, but then you would have to plug back in to find h. I just try to make it shorter by just going right to solving for h. So get your key ideas written down. Um, lots of different things to include there, and then try your check your understanding problems, and we will talk about those in class tomorrow. Tomorrow.